to speak this morning about Kwanzaa and mainly not about the symbols that you see, but I'm going to talk about the spiritual aspect of Kwanzaa. Amen. So I'm going to talk about those too. So Kwanzaa is an African American and a Pan American holiday. It is not a usual holiday, it's a cultural holiday that brings people together around family, around community, around purpose, very much like the gathering of life does. There are five things that I want to mention before I get on. And it is a time of in gathering of the people to return and affirm and reaffirm the bonds between them. It's a time of special reverence for the creator and the creations in thanks and respect for the blessings, for the bountifulness, and the beauty of creation. And that's something that we do when we come together in the gathering on every Saturday. We come to say thank you. We come to be a community. We come to support each other. And this is the same principles from what Plaza does. A time for commemorating of the past in pursuit of its lessons, and in honor of its models of human excellence and our ancestors. Kwanzaa and African religions are very much big on thanking those who came before us, who led us by the light, who led us to the path, who led us to the struggles. So in that way, we honor, and I still do this, uh, whatever uh, type or what, how the situation do when I get up or when I can think of it. I honor and I, I bless my mom, my great grandparents, <coughs> my aunts, all of the people who made it possible for me to be here today to participate. And it is a time for celebration of the good, the good of life and the existence itself, the good of family, the community, the culture, the good of the awesomeness and the ordinary. In a word, the good of the divine, the natural and the social. Kwanzaa is rooted in African history. It comes from seven, seven different uh, values that have been given and seven symbols. I'm gonna talk about the seven symbols and the seven symbols are the Kanara, it's the mat, it's the cup, the wooden cup, it's the gift, and it's the fruits. That's what I'm going to talk about. So, why was Plaza created? It was created to a communion, vision, and values of African culture, and to contribute to the restoration among African peoples and what they done in this country and other countries, so that they would have the value and know a worthiness for them. We know what it is to feel worthy and unworthy. So. By coming together, just like we do in the gathering, and having support and doing prayer and meditation, the same type of principles are done during Kwanzaa time. It's a reminder <coughs> in the family time. It's a reminder that it's not about money, and it's about family, it's about connection, and it's about honoring who and what we are. So those are some of the principles. What does, where does the word Kwanzaa come from? It comes from the phrase, Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which means the first fruits of Africa. It was chose as an expression of African values in order to inspire the creativity of our children in the early days. There were seven children who wanted to represent a letter of Kwanzaa. Since Kwanzaa means first, it has six letters. We add the extra A to make it seven as the word Kwanzaa. Why is it a seven day holiday? In terms of being authentic, Kwanzaa is modeled on the first fruits, as I said, celebration. The central reason for Kwanzaa being seven days is to stress the Nagusa. And I gave out, um, I believe everybody has the principles, and those are Nagusa Sama. So those are the seven principles that go along with Kwanzaa. And they said it when they lit the candles. So Kwanzaa, it speaks to our needs and our appreciation to have a cultural vision 
just like it speaks to our needs and have a purpose. That's why we're here every Saturday, and that's why we participate at the Gathering of Light. Not only do we participate, but we outreach, and we show people that they're welcome here. The same thing with Kwanzaa. Anybody is welcome. It's an African-American holiday, but anyone can celebrate it because the principles are universal. They're just not for one type of person or one type of people. They're for all the people. It speaks to our needs for the cultural vision and life-affirming values, which celebrate and reinforce our family, our culture, and our sangha. Here we have the sangha, so that's the same thing, the same family in Kwanzaa. It represents an important way Africans speak our own special cultural truth in a multicultural world. So identification of people is very important. We don't have a heritage, because we were born here. So you have to make your own heritage and you have to make your own connections. And that's the same way we do in the gallery. We come and we look for friends and we look for fellow people and we call upon them and we depend on them, they depend on us. It's the same kind of principle. Um, it brings us together from all countries, all religions, traditions, all classes. It doesn't matter if you're Baha'i, it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian. You can celebrate Kwanzaa because it's a non-religion, non-heroic uh, holiday. It's just a holiday to make combination for people to get together, as I said before. Kwanzaa organizes people, gives them a chance to be together, gives them to a chance to reaffirm the bonds to focus on positive values, positive practices, things that will uplift you, the same as we do in the gathering. Things that uplift us, positiveness, even though we go through our obstacles, even though we go through our challenges, it doesn't matter. If we keep coming back, if we keep showing up, we will change. There will be a difference in who and what we are. There will be a difference in how we walk. Um, and all the celebrations, uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Diwali, all deal with fire, all deal with light, all deal with candles. And that's the purpose of just burning out, taking out, cleaning up, for what we are. It's an evidence for our soul what, what we have to do. So fire is very central to a lot of the African religions and fire to other religions. There's a value to know that there's real and important difference between spirituality and a commitment to the transcendent. Kwanzaa, as I said, is not a religious holiday, but a cultural one that reviews and looks at the same seven principles. Um, as I said before, some of the principles come from Maate, some of them come from Yoruba, some come Ashante Dagon, and those are African religions. For what Kwanzaa offers is not an alternative to their religion or faith, but a common ground of African culture where everybody can share and everybody can know what's going on. Um, does Kwanzaa stress its value and orientation? Why is this important? And this is very important because the values and the value orientations are important as philosophy because values are categories of our commitment, our priority, our excellence, and our human possibilities. And this is the same thing we do at the gathering. We have priorities, we have commitments, we have intentions, we have actions, and all this is the same type of principle that's been done here. As, at the same time, Kwanzaa reinforces association values of high justice, harmony, balance, receptivity, and order in the concept of the Mahat. It reminds us to hold our ancient tradition as a people who are spiritually grounded, who respect our ancestors and respect our elders, cherish and challenge our children, care for 
the value and the people that can't care for themselves regulate rightly to the environment and always, always seek to for the good and for God. Now I'm going to talk about very quickly <laughs> the symbols and what they mean. The fruits and the crops, which is the pumpkin and banana, represents the gathering of people. Sharing unity and sharing thanksgiving for the particular days. And the fruits are from the planting and the work of people's ideas. So just as you plant a seed, which we have also done at the gathering, there is a fruition. Our fruition is not even March. Um, that's a new place. <laughs> that's just one of the examples. Um, and in Africa, the family might include many generations. So many generations will live in a household and eat the fruit and the vegetables. You'll have a great-grandmother, a grandmother, a mother, a child, and they will stay together. The eldest man is responsible for taking care of the family. Or maybe the eldest woman, but it's basically the man. So that's what this represents. The place map in which is here. So this I would like to speak to as James Baldwin, a quote from him. And he says, for history is not merely something to be read and does not refer merely or even principally to the past. On the contrary, the great force of history comes from the facts that we carry it within us, are curiously controlled by it, and history is literally present in all that we do every single day. So, whatever we came from, whatever we're going, and even present in what we're doing, is a history that makes us who we are, adds to our present being, and helps us to do the action and the movement. The whole thing about Kwanzaa is what we do each and every day. So we do our spiritual practice, so we do our meditation, so we do an action. So we are responsible for these things, to take them upon ourselves and do it, not to wait for somebody else. Someone else will not do it, we will do it. <coughs> Okay, um, so during Kwanzaa, as I say, we study, we call, we reflect on our history and the role that we play. <coughs> the Mashuba, Saba, the Babuni, and the Mazo, and the Zawali, and the Unity Cup, and the Panara are all placed on the map. The mat is the foundation of who and what we are. This is the foundation. These are the children, these are the offspring of the foundation. The corn represents the children we have in our family. If we don't have any children, the people or the ideas that we bring forth to make forth, to make a wholeness of spirit. So I want to talk about the candles because the candles are very important. They're symbols, but they're very important. The three candles are placed on the right, and the red candles are placed on the left. I have it wrong. Uh, then the candles to lit are lit to give up more light, and it's also for the vision. So as you have the light, you also have the vision from the light. Uh, the number of candles burning indicate the principle that's being set, uh, celebrated. So the luminant fire of the candles is the basic element of the universe. And every celebration and festival includes fire, as I said in some way. The fire is to speak like the sun, it's irresistible, it can destroy or it can create. It's mesmerizing, it's mystifying power. The colors are red, black, 
and Green, and it was created by Marcus Garvey, who was an early black nationalist. So red is the color of Shango, and Shango is the god of a Euro, a Yoruba god. That's why we have that. It's also god of fire, thunder, and lightning, who lives in the clouds and sends down his thunderbolt whenever he is angry or whenever he's offended. The red also represents the struggle for self-determination and freedom by people of color. Black is the people, the earth, the creativity, the source of life, representing hope, life, and denoting messages and opening and closing of doors. Green represents the earth that sustains us and provides hope, divination, employment, and the fruits of the harvest. The candle holder, like I said, is made from wood, be made from sticks, anything that they gather. And the canara symbolizes the ancestors who were once earthbound, understand the problems of human life, and are willing to protect their children and families. In African festivals, the ancestors are always remembered and honored. And the candles are always put in here. The last thing I want to talk about is the gifts, and the gifts are given at the Paramo. The Paramo is a, a festival that is done on December the 31st, and it's a large festival. People come, you bring food. It represents the seven days, or the six, seven day that you have honored your ancestors. You have read all the Nozuba Sabas. You have made homemade gifts. They don't like you to bring gifts that have not been made, um, a sweater or a painting or something. You have people who celebrate Kwanzaa, represent and work all, kind of all year long to bring a, a homemade gift. So, and at the end, they do libations, again, to the ancestors. Libations are, are poured out, and the east, the west, north, the south, and you are then honored, and you honor your ancestors. You call out their names. A lot of people just call out the whole names of their relatives and um, say, thank you. You know, I'm glad you were in my life, um, and I welcome you. They also ask you to ask questions of yourself. What is my purpose? What do I want to do? Where am I going? Some people ask you, are you spiritual today? And what do I want to do with my life? What joys have came from my life? The whole holiday is a joyous holiday. It's some somber at times, but it's about joy. And um, basically, that's it.